Hey, Witches of the Moon, welcome to episode 9, or episode 9 sounds good. Okay, so we are doing our giveaway this week, and you have to comment on every creator's video for the week, and um, see if you, well, then you'll get put into the raffle to win the giveaway. Okay, so I am just spellbound, so I am sorry for the poor quality, but, you know, we work with what we've got. Um, sorry, my light is funny and it's late. So it's like quarter to 11. Uh, we're talking about wild crafting this week, which is awesome. I love wild crafting. I love crafting period in general. So what, um, what I have around me, I have grapevines, which are awesome for all different types of things. I love using different bunny trees, um, for all different types of stuff and I guess I should have been a little bit more prepared but it has been a really long day so the um I'm looking around to see if I have anything in grabbing view okay um, oh that was a bad chin move but here is just this is just a branch off of my tree uh, that fell during the storm and see how it has like these I am just going to make myself kind of a spirit rattle to use when I am doing um, ancestor work for the land, my land ancestor work. Um, so that is so simple and is such a good way of, um, like I can't, I'm not, I can't buy a drum right now. So I would love to have a drum, but I can't have one. So I'm going to make a spirit rattle instead and use that as a way of raising energy for my ritual when I do my... Um, my land appreciation stuff so that's an idea i use grapevines uh willow branches are really great but i will use them and make little I don't know, like small stands for my um stones so i have a lot of um spheres and i'll use i'll intertwine and make like little tiny wreaths uh for that i will also make brooms which i have a couple that are drying um to hang up for every season typically what i've been doing before i started making my own brooms is i bought one broom that was like wicker and i just kept redecorating it but i'd really like to have one for every season um and that i just used tall grasses that i dried out and a branch from the willow tree and i even use the tall grass i think they're like cattail grasses because they're really thick but they are kind of really sharp along the edges but you can use those cattail um grasses i let them dry out i bless them with the water um you know my holy water and then um used it and wrapped it that might be uh you know and just Put it together and i have it up and it was blessed by the full moon and i will um continue to make those that was like my 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 tester one you can also if you have a lot of like viney trees like the willow or grapevines uh you can also use them to make um actual wreaths which are very pretty i love um i've been waiting for to see because the grapes my grapevines did have some grapes and then they died off so now some of them are starting to dry up and those are the ones that I'll break off soak and then reuse um, and then I also find it's kind of like pruning you know get rid of the dead stuff um, and then when you soak them they could become pliable again so I will um, I love those like pentagram hanging wreath ones so that's probably gonna be my next project but I have so much going on outside right now um, I also um, really enjoy being able to forage things that are local to me. Elderberry is local to me. Yarrow is local to me. Elderberry is a great herb for transformation, for rebirth, for, uh, you know, death of the old, to bring in the new. It is good for contacting um, spirits, you know, doing spirit work. Yarrow is a great um, auric shield. It's a, it strengthens and uh, protects your aura so that they kind of go hand in hand for me. Um, I like, uh, I have done, I'm not going to show you now because my, my house is kind of a disaster area today, but um, you can do acorns if you have acorns in your area. You can do acorns on a string and tie them and they are good for protection and knowledge. So you can hang them on your door handles. Um, I did that until I started noticing my animals were eating them. So that doesn't happen anymore. 
Um, you could even do uh, those tall grasses uh, can be woven and you can make like little sachets that if you um, want to use them to dispose of um, uh, spell work or whatever you can always just put them put the remnants into those little baskets because uh, they're super easy to be woven because of the type of grass that it is and you can always just bury them or leave them out um what else for natural spell crafting or natural wild crafting hmm. i think that's pretty much where I stand. I use a lot for brooms. I make a lot of baskets. I make a lot of wreath type things. Um, spirit rattles are great. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. I keep looking around because I'm like, I know I've got more. Uh, river water. Oh my gosh. Get some river water. Get some river water. River water is great for um, doing outside blessings and that kind of thing. Um, but I think that's it, you guys. I don't have a whole lot more because I didn't I didn't pre-plan this because of how late it is that I didn't think to um, I didn't think to grab. Gardening is a great way to really specify what you want to grow. Um, if you think about your your craft, if you think about your spirituality, the way that you practice your magic, if you think about the things that you use, you can then just grow it. I know it's hard in some climates, but um, you know, you kind of got to work with what your temperature is. And being that I am in um, zone six, I think it is zone six, but I'm able to have an herb garden outside. And those herbs um, are grown here. They're mine. I don't buy them from somewhere else. And there's not, nothing wrong with, you know, buying them somewhere else. But it is more convenient for me to be able to go out there and kind of take a little bit and dry it. Um, you can make your own wind chimes. I have a couple of those um, hanging on the outside of my door and in my windows. Um, if you get, you know, sticks, you can make a herb drying hanger. And those are really, really cool. I can't, um, unfortunately, make anything like that. Um, but I think that it's just about seeing what you need in your craft and being able to use what's local to you to really enhance your connection to where you're at. And I think that that is the main part of wild crafting. That is the essence in my mind of wild crafting and tailoring it to your craft is uh, finding out what the local flora and um, herbs are and, and, and doing all of that. Like I, I just... Um, started to try and reroute uh, some hibiscus uh, common hibiscus is natural here so i did do that and a couple of um blueberry bushes so we'll see how that goes um i also have some uh barberry bushes they're called they were or ornamental but because of the way that people were planting them they've really become to be quite a nuisance plant i think but um I re I relocated a bunch of them and I've used them as because uh, we're not allowed to have fencing so I've been using them kind of as a border for my yard um, and uh, you know thorn bushes are great for that kind of thing um, for protection and you know just they're beautiful and they're big and they're thorn bushes so that kind of sends a message all in itself all right, you guys, I'm sorry I'm changing the angle on you. It is late. My kids are asleep, so I am heading there as well. I hope you all had a magical Wednesday. I hope you have a great day and an awesome week, and I will be back next week. All right, you guys, blessed be.